What we have for you today are two bikes that on paper seem very, very similar because they are similar in a lot of ways, but on pavement, when you actually get to riding them, they're very different. It's the Indian FTR 1200S and the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XC. Let's get into it. Now, both these bikes cost about $15,000. This Indian is 15 grand and that Triumph just $200 cheaper. So we thought this would be a really good comparison, especially because they're the same price basically and they both have 1200 twin cylinder engines. This one though on the FTR makes way more horsepower than that Triumph, 120 horsepower and 89 foot pounds of torque. This sounds pretty good, let's take a listen. As Alex mentioned, both of these bikes are 1200s. One major difference is that the Indian has a V-twin, whereas this Triumph has a parallel twin. And like he also mentioned, yeah, it's 89 horsepower, not 120, and 81 pound-feet of torque instead of 87, so not as much horsepower, not as much torque. But surprisingly, this Triumph actually weighs 30 pounds less than the Indian. The Indian is 482 pounds dry and this is 452 pounds dry. So even though this bike looks much bigger when you see them parked next to each other, it is surprisingly a little bit lighter. And another kind of surprising thing, even though this is a parallel twin and that's a V-twin, they make a surprisingly similar noise. Alright, pulling onto the road in the Triumph, getting on the throttle. Ha! <laughs> little rev limiter there. You know, <laughs> this bike is not nearly as powerful as the Indian, but it is definitely not slow. It feels, it feels great to ride. I like the power delivery on this, it's torquey, it's fun, and this motor has a nice quality to it. it. It feels very refined. It has a nice way of just ticking along like a fine timepiece. And that's what's great about this entire bike is the build quality on it feels phenomenal. And you notice that with every part of your riding experience. All right, getting the Indian FTRS out on the road. This road looks familiar if you watch the full review. And I've got more power than Case, so I had to pass him, just to let him know. You can have your spot back, bud. I also love the feel of the six-speed transmission on this bike. These are both six-speeds, but this Triumph just has a really satisfying kind of clunk to it. Maybe clunk isn't the right word, but you can always tell what gear you're going into, and uh, it's got a good positive feedback. Super sporty riding position on this Indian. My legs are kicked very far back, pretty aggressive angle in the knees. My back is not perfectly upright, although pretty upright. I'm leaned a little bit forward on this, but definitely more aggressive and more sporty than on that Triumph in front of me. Now I've ridden both of these bikes back to back today, and on paper, this Indian is heavier than the Triumph, but they feel pretty similar actually in terms of weight. This is 30 pounds heavier, which is a pretty significant amount, but I think that so much of the weight on that Triumph is up high and off the ground, so feels like it's got the same amount of weight as this Indian. So as far as suspension goes on the FTR, up front an inverted fork from Saks, fully adjustable, and it's even got a red fork cap to match the red accents on this bike. Pretty cool looking. And then moving to the rear, we have a monoshock also from Saks, also fully adjustable. It's even got a little piggyback reservoir on the back. Just like Alex, I have fully adjustable front forks, except these units are from Showa. And then working towards the back, instead of a monoshock, I've got these two also fully adjustable Olin's shocks, like my pronunciation. These are super cool looking, a little bit more retro because it's twin shocks, but a really nice setup. This is good, 
good components. Brakes on the FTR, we're looking at dual 320 millimeter discs with these Brembo four piston calipers. And then on the back, also a Brembo caliper. And this bike does have ABS, but we'll touch on that in a bit when we get to the tech section. Big surprise, yet another way in which these bikes are similar is that they both have Brembo brakes. And not only that, but this Triumph also has twin 320 millimeter discs in the front. So a very similar setup. It's a different set of calipers. And then around back, again, also a Brembo brake. So in that way, the Indian and the Triumph are, like I said, very similar. One way that they're very different is that the Triumph has a 17 inch rear wheel and a 21 inch front wheel, both of which are spoked, whereas the Indian has cast wheels and it's 17s in the front and in the rear. Lots of torque out of this motor though. That Triumph's pretty torquey too. A lot more horsepower on this bike, but both these bikes, when you twist the throttle, they, they get going pretty good and they have a pretty similar sound that comes out of them too. One area where I know Alex is not a huge fan of the Triumph is in its handling and granted, because that 21 inch front wheel versus the 17s on the front and back of the Indian, it's not quite as willing to tip into turns, but this bike's got good suspension. It's well designed in the chassis. It still feels good around turns. Maybe just not quite as good. I have a great spot to grip my legs on this bike. They sit right on the bottom of this tank right here. And it's uniform on both sides. And then moving the bike through the corners, this has 17 inch wheels front and back. So it does like to corner a little better than the staggered setup on the Triumph. Whenever you have a bigger wheel in the front than the rear, makes it good for riding dirt roads and stuff but if you're really trying to get some lean angles going in the turns having matching 17 inch wheels is the way to go also much stickier rubber on this bike versus the slightly knobby tires to handle some dirt riding on that so if you want to take either of these bikes out in the dirt probably a better option on that these tires won't do so well for you but they do make a version of this bike with knobbier tires so if that's your thing and you really like the indian you still have an option there all right now for the tech section and case has put me in charge of doing both these bikes because i'm a much bigger nerd than he is but it's coming to life right now on the indian we have a 4.3 inch tft screen and it is a touch screen. And that simple fact alone makes this system, in my opinion, much easier to use than the Triumph system. So it takes a few minutes to come to life, but once it does, you can see everything pop up there. Lots of information and a really modern looking display. You can cycle down using this toggle right here and get a more old school, traditional looking display, which is pretty cool. There's also some settings to go through. Uh, you can turn traction control on and off right there it also has three riding modes rain standard and sport and lastly if we go into settings here it actually has a cylinder deactivation mode to keep your legs a little bit cooler while you're riding this bike a few more tech features that this bike does have it has abs cornering abs uh, rear wheel lift mitigation wheelie control but you can't disable all that stuff so it just kind of lives on the traction control is the only thing you can actually turn off couple more things there's also cruise control which you can operate up here with your left handlebar control and also you have a phone and music setting right here this bike doesn't have speakers but if you have some sort of bluetooth communicator in your helmet you can sync up your phone to this screen so that you can actually see what you're doing and control your media through the screen right here and have it play through your helmet it's a wireless key fob so you just keep this in your pocket press the power button up here and the bike will come to life you can see this also has a tft screen but in a much different layout it's pretty much the same size but it does have kind of this bezel separating it in the center here so it splits it up into three different sections both the screen on the indian and the triumph look pretty good case i think prefers the look of this screen I prefer the Indian just because I think it's easier to see without this ring in the middle, but that's all personal preference. Once you're in here, you do have some customization. You can use this joystick right here to toggle through everything and uh, you can see some of the data changing there. You can also um, switch between uh, different themes on this screen 
and then we can get to the riding modes here. This has five different riding modes, sport, off-road, rider, rain, and road. There's also uh, the ability to customize one of these rider modes and change the ABS, the attraction control, and the throttle mapping um, depending on how you like it. So you can really make a custom ride mode. I like this system, but just the fact that it's not a touchscreen makes it pretty hard to use. Uh, if I lived with this bike as my only motorcycle for a period of time, I'd probably get used to it, but I don't ride this bike all the time. I tend to hop on this, then another bike, then another bike, and by the time I finally make it back onto the seat of this bike, I've forgotten how to navigate this whole system. So definitely ease of use as far as technology goes. The Indian's the clear winner. Just like the Indian, this Triumph Scrambler has cruise control and it has all the same rider aids that the Indian has besides wheelie control. The Indian has that, whereas this Triumph doesn't. What I really love about this Triumph is the fact that it's comfortable, it's relaxed. This is a great bike to cruise on. You could commute on this bike very easily. And it suits my style of riding, which is slower than Alex's. So. This is a nice bike to go to a restaurant on. It's a good bike to go pick up groceries in, cruise around town, and it's definitely my style. It's very pretty, very nicely made, and a very nice thing to interact with. It doesn't stress you out. If I wanted to ride really fast and push it to the limit, I'd be on a dirt bike, or I know for Alex, he would want to be on a track, and he has a track bike for cruising around on the street. This Triumph is the kind of thing that I like, and for good reason, I would say. This Triumph has more than enough performance for the street, but it's just a nice, comfortable thing to cruise around on, and for a road bike, for going exploring, having some scrambler tires, some dual sport tires that can do a little bit of dirt riding, especially here in Colorado, that's another big bonus. All in all, these bikes handle very differently. This Indian likes to corner a little bit more, likes to stay leaned over in the turns. The Triumph likes to be upright a little bit more. Both very torquey. That's better on dirt. This is better on the street. So slightly different use cases, but both insanely stylish bikes. Both of these motorcycles are very much about design, but they approach it in very different ways. This Indian FTR 1200 has a super modern look to it, and it's a really attractive motorcycle, if you ask me. One of my favorite things about Indian bikes in general are their engine covers. The satin gray with their logo on it is really attractive, and they do a great job with their engine covers on all of their bikes. These are probably my favorite looking engines in the market. And then all around, just great color choice. You can also get this bike in burgundy red, but this white with black and red accents, super classic, great to look at. So a much more sleek kind of modern design, whereas looking at the Triumph, this is a very retro motorcycle. So almost looks like it could be out of the 70s. You've got a leather seat, and this is of course a scrambler. So you have knobby tires, and that's one major difference between these two. There is a rally version of the FTR that gets you knobby tires. This one is just a naked motorcycle, whereas this is a scrambler, so that's one big style difference. But I'd say my favorite thing about the Triumph is the quality of all these components. And we've talked about this on other Triumphs before and on this one. There's a lot of metal on this bike, a lot of things that you interact with, and they just feel well designed, they feel well made. These materials are great. So even if you go and interact with parts of the motorcycle that you wouldn't generally touch, they have a really nice feel to them, which is cool. So everywhere around this bike, it's just got a great fit and finish. Um, overall, which bike has the better style? It's kind of hard to pick. Let us know in the comments what you think. Another major difference between the Indian and the Triumph is the tank size and the seat height. So this Indian has a 3.4 gallon tank and a 30.7 inch seat height, whereas the Triumph has a 4.2 gallon tank and a 33.1 inch seat height. So bigger tank on the Triumph, but also a much taller seat height. All right, so I'm on the Triumph right now and I just wanna give you a little bit of my thoughts on this bike. The clutch feels very different. So one of the main complaints I had about the FTR in my full review was that the clutch was super grabby and had a very narrow window of where it worked. And this is quite the opposite. The motor does feel very similar between these two bikes. 
very similar sound and acceleration characteristic out of it. I'm sitting up a lot higher on this Triumph than I do on the FTR. The bars are a lot wider, so feels a little more like a dual sport, whereas the FTR feels like a sport bike. Uh, and then there's comfort, actual seating position. I find the FTR to be a much more comfortable bike than this Triumph Scrambler. I love to grip my legs to the tank on a bike, and the FTR gives you a really good spot to do that. This bike doesn't. I am hitting my uh, right leg on the exhaust right here, and then I'm hitting my left knee on the top part of the motor, so it doesn't give you a super comfortable spot to grip your legs. So there you have it, the Indian FTRS and the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XC. Two bikes that look very similar on paper, but once you get them out on the road and actually ride them, they feel completely different. I'm sitting on the Indian right now because that's the clear winner for me. I like how it handles a lot better. It feels sportier to me and I like the screen setup. But Case, I think, would pick the other bike. That's why I'm leaving the seat open for him. He likes the style of that one better, the old school looks. He likes the knobby tires on it. Uh, but you can't go wrong with either. Let me know down in the comments below which of these two bikes you would choose and let me know why. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.